This is the latest generation general purpose type 38 locomotive built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors. Known as a GP38-2, it packs an efficient 16-cylinder diesel electric motor able to generate 2,000 horsepower. First off, walk over to the locomotive as indicated. Open the cab door and proceed inside. To take control, you'll want the engineer's seat. Head over and sit down. Safety always comes first on the railroad. So to start with, we need to let those around us know this locomotive is operational. Begin by turning the forward headlights control to bright. There are three key controls to operating this locomotive. The reverser, brakes, and throttle. The reverser determines direction of travel. Put this into forward. To the left is the auto brake, which applies brakes along the entire length of the train. Let's move this to release. We're about to move, so make two blasts of the horn to alert anyone around. Remember, safety first. Now add some power, but not too much. Too much power too soon can damage both the locomotive and the cars. Always start off nice and slowly. Increase the throttle lever by one notch. You're moving. Great work. To maintain a constant speed, move the throttle back to its idle position. That concludes the basic engineer training on this locomotive. So let's bring it to a stop. Move the auto brake to initial reduction. As with applying power, too much brake pressure applied too quickly can be detrimental to the train and its cargo.
That was great work. You've just completed your first lesson operating the GP38-2. There's always more that can be discovered, though. As engineers, we'll never stop honing our skills. This is a special duty Type 40 locomotive built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors. Known as an SD40-2, this locomotive is one of the most successful designs of all time. A 16-cylinder diesel-electric motor provides a stopping 3,000 horsepower. First off, walk over to the locomotive as indicated. Open the cab door and proceed inside. To take control, you'll want the engineer's seat. Head over and sit down. Safety always comes first on the railroad. So to start with, we need to let those around us know this locomotive is operational. Begin by turning the forward headlights control to bright. There are three key controls to operating this locomotive. The reverser, brakes, and throttle. The reverser determines direction of travel. Put this into forward. To the left is the auto brake, which applies brakes along the entire length of the train. Let's move this to release. We're about to move, so make two blasts of the horn to alert anyone around. Remember, safety first. Now add some power but not too much. Too much power too soon can damage both the locomotive and the cars. Always start off nice and slowly. Increase the throttle lever by one notch. You're moving! Great work. To maintain a constant speed, move the throttle back to its idle position. That concludes the basic engineer training on this locomotive. So, let's bring it to a stop. Move the auto brake to initial reduction. As with applying power, too much brake pressure applied too quickly can be detrimental to the train and its cargo.
This locomotive is the AC 4400 CW built by General Electric Transportation of Erie, Pennsylvania. This is the workhorse of the sand patch grade, able to generate a staggering 4,400 horsepower from its motor. First off, walk over to the locomotive as indicated. Open the cab door and proceed inside. To take control, you'll want the engineer's seat. Head over and sit down. Let's get started by letting those around us know this locomotive is operational. Begin by turning the forward headlights control to bright. There are three key controls to operating this locomotive. The reverser, brakes, and the combined power handle. The reverser determines direction of travel. Put this into forward. The right hand levers are the brakes. There are separate controls for the entire train and for just the locomotive. Pull the independent brake lever all the way towards you. We're about to move, so make two blasts of the horn to alert anyone around. Remember, safety first. Now add some power, but not too much. Too much power too soon can damage both the locomotive and the cars. Always start off nice and slowly. Pull the throttle lever towards you by one notch. You're moving. Great work. Push the throttle lever away from you to the middle center off or idle position. That concludes the basic engineer training on this locomotive. So let's bring it to a stop. Move the independent brake forward a short distance. As with applying power, too much brake pressure applied too quickly can be detrimental to the train and its cargo. Let's take a look at how to use the turntable. It'll come in useful around Cumberland Yard. There are two key components. The table, which must be locked in place to use, and the control cabin where the table is operated from. Take a seat inside the control cabin and we'll get started.
On the left is a monitor to view the action outside. In the middle is the rotation control. And on the right is the table lock control. Let's activate the desk by turning the monitor on and unlocking the table. Now we want to rotate the table to point towards the nearby locomotive. Click and drag the rotation control to move the table in the direction you need. Let go of the rotation control as the desired track nears the left side of the monitor. Before we head over to the locomotive, be sure to lock the table again so that the turntable is safe to drive onto. As you drive onto the turntable, take it very slowly so you don't overshoot. Going slowly also means that not much brake is required to stop. Once stopped, climb down from the locomotive and head back to the control cabin. With the locomotive ready to be turned, activate the monitor and unlock the table. Using the rotation control, turn the table and locomotive to the indicated track. Lock the turntable in place before you leave, then climb back aboard the locomotive and run it to the designated marker.
Refueling is an important part of keeping a locomotive running, so let's go over how we do it. A refueling stand consists of two components, the hose which connects to the locomotive and the pump activation control. A locomotive is already stopped in the right place. Walk over and remove the fuel cap. Now, go and pick up the fuel hose. Take it over to the locomotive and attach the hose to the fuel tank. Return to the fuel stand and activate the refueling pump. The system will automatically switch off once the tank is full. You can see the state of refueling by observing the indicator on the side of the fuel tank. Pick up the hose and put it back on the fuel stand. Then replace the fuel tank cap. So you want to learn about yard switching? Let's take a look. Before a train goes anywhere, crews arrange all the cars together. Meticulous planning goes into making sure the right cars go to the right tracks to make up the right trains. This process is called switching. Climb aboard this locomotive and we'll get started. Set the locomotive up and pull towards the cars ahead. Take it easy though. Five miles an hour will do just fine. Gently bump into the cars up ahead. The couplers will engage automatically. That's it. You got this. Now, haul them back beyond the switch in the track.
Okay, the train is clear. Bring it to a stop. To put these cars with the others on the adjacent track, a switch in the track must be changed. Climb down from the locomotive and walk to the switch. Move the lever so the rails align to the other direction. Excellent. We're all set. Climb back aboard and push the cars down the track, connecting them with the others already there.
You're doing great. Keep it up. Now to uncouple the locomotive from the cars, climb down and walk to the first freight car. First off, apply the brake wheel on the freight car so they are secured in place. Pull the cut lever to disconnect the locomotive from the cars. And that's all there is to it. This process is repeated until all the cars required are assembled on the same track. To finish, climb back aboard the locomotive and move it up the track so it is ready to assemble more cars. Coal loading is a common occurrence on Sandpatch Grade, so we better take a look at how to do it. To engage the loading process, the train must be moving at a constant rate and not exceeding the speed limit. In order to move the train very slowly, this locomotive is fitted with speed control. This is located on the integrated function display. We're now ready to move under the coal loader ahead, so get the train moving. As we have set the slow speed control, it does not matter what throttle position is used, the locomotive will only travel at the indicated speed. When the train is within range, the loader will activate and a notification will appear. The process of loading the cars is completely automated. As each car passes under the chute, the loader will dispense coal until it is full. This will continue until all the cars are loaded. With the train under semi-automatic control, you can watch the loading process from an external camera.
to bring the train to a halt, return the throttle handle to idle, and on the integrated function display, press slow speed control off. Now bring the train to a stop. This is where you'll learn all about train brakes and how they work. On this locomotive, there are three braking systems available to the engineer. Dynamic, auto, and independent. Dynamic brakes work by reversing the polarity of the traction motors. When a train is moving, this action causes resistance against the turning axis. As this system only works when the axles are turning, this means the dynamic brake cannot stop a train, only slow it down. Train or auto brakes work by controlling air pressure in a brake pipe that runs the entire length of the train. This pipe connects to brake cylinders located on each individual car. In turn, these cylinders push directly onto the wheels to slow them down. Locomotive or independent brakes are similar in operation to the auto brake. However, this brake only affects the locomotive itself not the entire train. The independent brake is used when switching cars in a yard or for holding a stop train on level or low grade. When the auto brake is applied, it directly affects something called the equalizing reservoir. Think of this readout as the target pressure for the air controlled brakes on the train. Next to it is the brake pipe pressure. This indicates the overall brake pressure along the train. So as the engineer, you set a desired pressure via the equalizing reservoir, and then the brake system will react to match this target. Perform a brake application on this train of 20 cars to see this process in action. Using the auto brake, reduce the equalizing reservoir. Watch for the brake pipe pressure indication to change, matching this reduction, and applying the brakes on the train. Now let's see this same process on a much larger train. Head over to the adjacent locomotive and climb into the cab. This train has a hundred cars. Let's see what difference this has on the reaction speed of the brakes. Repeat the equalizing reservoir reduction from before, again using the auto brake. Watch how long it now takes for the brake pipe pressure to match. The skill of the engineer is knowing when to start braking. Now that we have seen the brakes applied, let's see how long it takes to release them. 
Using the auto brake, set the equalizing reservoir back to its previous position. This action triggers the brake pump. 